the challenge documents are out. Now what? Usually, teams build their challenge set models first. Now, let us look at each of the major components of the program to help get you started. These are not complete lessons, but some guidance on how to get started. Let's first start with the core values. What are the first core values? Discovery. We explore new skills and ideas. Innovation. We use creativity and persistence to solve problems. Impact. We apply what we learn to improve our world. Teamwork. We are stronger when we work together. Inclusion. We respect each other and embrace our differences. And fun. We enjoy and celebrate what we do. You do all that while guided by Grisha's professionalism and cooperation. Let's review what those two words mean. Grisha's professionalism is treating everyone with respect, being gracious, and displaying friendly sportsmanship. Cooperation is a word made up of cooperation and competition. It means being able to help those you compete against to make everyone better. If you look at the Share and Learn community, you will see that those two words have special meaning to the community. Teams talk about how when their robot was dropped, students from other teams started to pick up all the pieces and offer help. There are examples of teams spending time helping and mentoring other teams that they will compete against the next month. This is what FIRST is about and the heart of FL Tutorials and Share and Learn. Why are the core values so important? They are the foundation for FIRST Sego League and what makes this program different from all the others. In essence, core values is not really something that you do. It is a way of doing things that builds character and guides you. The lessons that you take away from core values can be applied outside of the program and for the rest of your lives. So, how can your team incorporate the core values into your season? The first step is to learn them. Then think about how you can use them. Maybe when you make decisions as a team as to what strategy you use and what robot to build, you make sure to include everyone's ideas. Maybe you work on a project, you end up having to discover new skills such as CAD design or animation. At the end of the season, you will share as many examples as you can about how you used and implemented the core values. Therefore, it is very important that you learn to use the core values from the start. There are other aspects of core values that can help you as well. Setting team goals and personal goals for each team member can help you document and track progress. For example, maybe one of your team members wants to learn to program the robot to follow a line and maybe another wants to learn to comfortably present in front of an audience. Finally, developing a team identity can be a fun way to practice core values. Decide as a team on a name that represents all of you. Decide on what type of t-shirt or hat you may wear. What makes your team your team? In addition to the Core Values rubric this year, please be aware that Gracious Professionalism has a separate rubric that will be judged at the robot game table. In addition to the engineering notebook from FIRST, here are some useful resources for you to learn more. Now, let's take a closer look at the innovation project. The best place to start is the text for the challenge. This is on page 7 of the engineering notebook. It is helpful if you read the text and underline or circle key words. What are you being asked to do? Are there any restrictions on the topic? You will notice the main words identify, research, design, share, and create. Teams have to identify a specific problem related to making the transportation journey of products better. Then, they want you to research the problem your team selected and see what existing solutions exist. Now comes the solution. The challenge is very specific. It asks you to design and create a new piece of technology, equipment, or method of transportation. You have to make a model or prototype. You are expected to share your ideas, get feedback, and iterate your solution. Finally, you will present the work in 5 minutes to judges. Keep all this in mind as you explore problems and come up with solutions. We find that looking at the rubric is also helpful early on. There is additional information there to guide your team. For example, 
you can see that they are looking for a variety of sources when you do research. Therefore, don't just look at websites. How about using books, magazines, research papers, experts, or going on a field trip? Note that they expect you to plan your project before you begin and include everyone. Sharing with users of your solution as well as professionals is encouraged. Iterating and improving your solution is also an important step in the journey. Now you can start to think about the project topic. If you are stuck, look at the mission models themselves. What do each of them represent? You can do some research to find out if there are any problems associated with that type of transportation or similar. Think of the innovation project as part of the research project. Understanding the problem thoroughly and using different reliable sources is important. It is also important to research what type of solutions already exist for your problem so that you can tell your judges about how innovative your project is and the impact that it will have. Why is your idea better? Remember that in First Sega League, you do not have to come up with a completely new product or solution. You can improve upon an existing one too. The innovation project is also a bit like a science fair entry in engineering. You're going to design and create a solution. Then you should test it out, share it, and see. Finally, you should improve it. In addition to the engineering notebook from First, here are some useful resources for you to learn more. Now let's talk about how to get started in the robot design portion of First LEGO League. The best place to start is by reading the robot game rulebook. You should read it on the first day, but also refer to it often. It can seem daunting, but all team members should read it, not just the coaches. When you compete at the tournament, only students can advocate for themselves. Therefore, students should be knowledgeable of all the rules and be able to talk to referees without the help of a coach. Please note that sometimes there are challenge updates to these rules. You have to check the first LEGO League website for these updates each week. Once you have placed all your models on the challenge mat, take a close look at them. Where are they located? How are they activated? Can several missions near each other be completed together? Are the missions near lines? Take notes as you think about these questions. The next step is to come up with a strategy for your team. Use paper and pen or an electronic version to plan your robot's path based on what you know about their location, activation method, points, and more. Plan each robot launch. What path will the robot go on and what mission or missions will it complete each time? Having a clear strategy is important in robot design. Remember that you do not have to complete all missions to be successful in First LEGO League. Complete missions that you are able to. Some teams will complete 2-3 to three missions, others will complete 6-7, to seven, and a few teams may be able to complete all of them in the 2.5 minutes. The next step is to design a robot that can accomplish the strategy you chose. You can start with some basic designs available online and then think about how to make them work better for your needs. Your design may have to change over time. You should also test your design to make sure you are happy with it. Is it well balanced? Does it move straight? Checking and fixing any flaws up front will save you lots of time later. If you decide that your robot will follow a line to a mission, it will need a color sensor. If you want to align on a line on the mat, you will need two color sensors. If you decide that your robot will complete a task that requires you to lift something, you may need a motorized arm. If you will use a wall to straighten out, you will need a flat surface on the outside. Planning ahead will greatly help your team but do not be afraid to make changes along the way. Sometimes you may find that you have a better idea later. The robot design portion of First Sega League relies heavily on the engineering design process. If you look at the rubric, you will notice that there are several areas where a team needs to be able to demonstrate why they made the design choices that they did, how they tested their ideas, and how they improved upon them. It will be helpful for you to keep track of your decisions, tests, and changes in your engineering notebook. Students must be able to explain their robot and code. As the season progresses, it can be helpful to keep track of your own score. This will help you track your reliability and your performance. A paper score sheet is provided in your robot game rulebook, or you can use the electronic scoring tool that we create every year for our teams. 
Our score is available in multiple languages and is available on the FLL Tutorials website and also as apps for Apple and Android. In addition to the engineering notebook from FIRST, here are some useful resources for you to learn more. That brings us to the end of the video. Make sure to check out our other Cargo Connect related videos and subscribe for more to come. Also check out ev3lessons.com, primelessons.org, and floadtutorials.com for programming and first LEGO League related resources. Thank you and see you next time.